I like the way ink feels on my body. I don't. This tiger doesn't mean nothing. This this gorilla with the crown. I, I maybe maybe they do subconsciously. I don't know, but I just like. I seem to get them at the same time. After the fight, or just maybe before the next fight. But there's something therapeutic for me just going in. I don't spend months picking it. I just get see it, get it, and just enjoy the experience of being inked on my body for the rest of my life. I don't know what it is. It's but it doesn't mean nothing. I just like the way I like the way it feels and I like the way it looks. Balance is everything. Life. Life as a whole is about balance. So nothing else. If you think about it, when you're born, what's the first thing you learn? You learn how to control your head. You learn how to balance your, your neck muscles. Then you learn how to balance on the feet. Somewhere along the, on, on the way, you forget balance. So I like to always keep, keep my balance sharp. I feel when I'm balanced and controlled in my frame, and I have confidence in my frame, I can throw any shot or I can move in any sequence. Before me, nobody knew nothing about this sport. Nobody gave a shit about this sport. We were looked down upon. It wasn't true. We weren't even considered. Not only in like mainstream or whatever you want to call that, but even in fight circles. In real fight circles, we had a reputation, but in pure fighting, we had no reputation whatsoever. So um, I'm, I'm proud to be putting my nation at the forefront of the fight game where we belong. We're less than two weeks away from UFC 189. Um, Jose Aldo is, is your opponent for that. And I was fascinated by your move in the news conference. I know you guys are always trying to get into the head of your opponent. Mm -hmm. in, back in March, for the news conference to promote the fight, you actually snatched his belt. You hope to do that on July 11th. But you, you, you Well, I belt. snatched my belt well, it was simply taking what was mine he was on my home turf and he tried to lay claim that he was the king of my city but you do not lay claim to the, being the king of my city while the king of the city is around so <laughs> the king of the city rose up and snatched what was his which was the gold belt and raised it before my crowd my yes, passionate crowd it was you took it back exactly i took it back and raised it for my people it was a it was a beautiful moment in that it was a teaser almost for what July 11 will be where I where I raise it for real in, in beautiful Las Vegas City in front of my home crowd. Why are you so confident that you will do that? Um, I don't know. I'm in a business where you must be confident. If, we, we, if you have any doubts, they will, they will come back and play against you. So I am supremely confident. And as well, I feel I'm confident in my work ethic, my, my approach to the game, my non-stop effort to get better as a martial artist. I don't feel that nobody else in the game is doing what I'm doing or is moving the way I am moving. Where's that come from, Connor? It just comes from years and years of practice on the mat, you know. I have, I have had many fights inside the octagon, outside the octagon, in rings, on mats. I, I am an experienced veteran in the fight game and through, through that and through a belief in my team and my ability, I have just gained a bulletproof confidence that cannot be stopped. Are you big on predictions? Do you usually make predictions before fights? And if so, I always, how will it end on the 11th? I always make accurate predictions. I've predicted many contests. I've predicted my entire career. And, you know, I predict the future. So for me, I have already predicted this contest. I predict four minutes of the first round, he will be KO'd. First round? Wow. Yes, I feel that the, the power four matched minutes. with the precision, he will not be able to take it. So four minutes. First round, he will be he will be done. And uh, where do you live? My name is Conor McGregor, and I live in Lucan. And what's your status, or what's your professional? I'm a professional MMA fighter with a record of four and one. Um, I'm an up-and-coming fighter, and without a doubt, you will see me on the UFC in the in near future, without a doubt. Uh, how long have you been fighting? Well, I've been f I've been boxing pretty much. All my life, I um, I started MMA around two or three years ago, and about two years ago, I'd say, and I instantly had a knack for it, and I, I really, really, really loved it. It's like an addiction for me. It's it's all I do. I train twice a day. 
that's all I think about. It's just it's, it's, I don't want to do anything else. It's as simple as that. Uh, fighting as a boxing career, how how do you think that differs from any other type of career? Well, as in MMA, like how does it differ from MMA? How, how does it differ from, let's say, your your regular nine to five? As in, not well, obviously the, the yeah. obvious reason, yeah. but what is it, how does it differ from from your perspective? Oh, well. <laughs> Um, that's a really hard question. <laughs> that's a really hard question, isn't it? Well, statistically. <laughs> How does it differ? Jesus. Well, it differs. I don't know. Like, did you ever have? Like, what did you work as before you? Yes. I was. I was a plumber. I was. Uh, I was an apprentice plumber. I did a year in that, and it just. It just wasn't for me. You know. I, it's either. It's either all or nothing in the in the, the game. I mean, you. You have to. If you're not if you're not training twice a day, if you're not dedicated, you, you're not gonna go anywhere. So, I felt I had enough talent, enough dedication, enough love for the sport that it was time to pack up my job and chase my dream. And that that's what I'm doing, and that's that's what that, that's pretty much it. And what what is your dream? My dream is to be world champion, world lightweight champion in the UFC. Have more money than I know what to do with, and have a great life for my my kids, my grandkids, everyone in my in my family. Everyone that's that's come up with me that's my dream my dream is to be number one pretty much my goal is num number one MMA cool and uh, where are you training out of or what where are you fighting out I'm of? training in Straight Blast Gym in Walkinstown uh, on the Long Mile Road there my coach is John Cavanagh I train with top class fighters Tom Thomas the Tank Egan Ashtabash Daly Rowdy Owen Ruddy Rob Dog Quinn I train with all the top guys there I also box I just still I still compete boxing um I box in Crumlin Boxing Club. It's an amateur boxing club with a pro with a pro team as such pros as Ian Teams, Stephen Armand, excellent pros. Um, I train down there as well. I train I train there Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and then every other day, SBG honing my MMA skills. Well, I just, I just, to be honest, I love it all. It's everything. You can't, I'm not, I'm not one of these guys. I, I love me boxing. I love grappling. I love, I just, I love every last bit of it. It really, it really is the number one sport, and there's nothing out there like it. There's, I don't care what boxers or toy boxers or wrestlers or any of these type of guys say. They all know it. MMA is number one, and UFC is the top organization. It's as simple as that. It's, it's, it's the best out there. It's overtaking boxing. It's better than anything. What would it mean to you to? To live your dream of fighting the UFC, I can't. I, words can't even describe that. I'm training so hard, and my, my game is coming along. Uh, I will, I will be where I want to be. I, I, I'm, re, I'm a hundred percent confident that I, that I will make it to the top. I have the skills, I have the dedication, and it's something I really, really want. So, to, words, words can't even describe, but it will happen, and I'll let you know when it happens. With the year 2008, just about out. Looking back on your, your fighting career and your, your training, how has it been for you? The start of the year was the f my first year full-time training. I started full-time training in January, I'd say. Training twice a day, every day. My preparation for fights has been great. My game has come along. My ground game is unbelievable. It's From, from where I was at the start of the year to where I am now, it is, really is something how, how much I've come along. and It just goes to show that hard work and dedication really does pay off. Um, me, the year has gone great. Uh, I've established myself as one of the top contenders in Ireland. I will, I will be one of the top in the world, no doubt. And uh, I'm looking forward to 2009 and chasing my dream even more. And please God, next time the UFC back back in Dublin, I, I'm right up there on the list. I plan to take out everyone in Ireland that stands in my way, and everyone that's there. I, I want to be top of that list next time they come back, and I will be guaranteed. He's sacrificing for a career-defining fight. Inside this $2.4 million home is where he got word that Josie Aldo bruised a rib a few days ago, jeopardizing July's title fight. But he says it's not the rib the Brazilian champion should worry about. Don't worry about your rib. It's the chin I'm, I'm hitting. So. If Aldo can't fight, Chad Mendez will be there as a backup. The change could come just two days before the fight. That's why McGregor is calling out the Brazilian. Man up and fight. There's a lot on the line. There's a lot of money on the line. 
show up and fight. Promotion and preparation has been off the charts. UFC has pumped millions into this promotion. It's serious business. Like McGregor bringing his entire team to Las Vegas to train. Even a chef who brings beef from Japan. We call that beef butter. <laughs> the beef is tender as butter, then relaxing massage as a featherweight champion looks to win a belt. He says he wants to go home with gold. That means fighting Aldo, not Mendez. I want the real belt. I want Jose. That's that's what that's what everyone wants. That's what we all want. That's also what NHL defenseman Brent Burns wants. He's a fan of the Dublin native, was in town for the NHL award show and came over to watch McGregor train. Unfortunately, right now, as he walks the halls of his rented seven bedroom mansion, he doesn't know for sure who he's fighting. I'll be there. It's business as usual for me. That's the approach he'll have to take. Maybe we'll know on fight week who's stepping into the octagon, Aldo or Mendez. Chris Man. Uh, be careful now on that. What do you think you see is not a <laughs> You were on the f***ing Yukon. You'll end up in that boot. I've never been in a Rolls. No? No. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> took it in. Look. Get that. I'm going to come up to you tomorrow. Do you have, I swear to God. I'm going to come up to you tomorrow. You in the they're like a cardboard cutout of me in a fighting stance and the Irish flag draped over the balcony. That is f***ing crazy. I'm here on the west coast. Like most fights, I usually come out maybe two, three weeks before. Um, but every time I come back, it seems to be a little bit more crazy with the fans, you know. They treat me like I'm one of their own. And then I've been driving to the gym every day and I drive past this guy's apartment and it's like on the balcony he has like Irish flags and a cardboard cutout of me like sitting on his balcony. So now we're going to go drop into him and see what he's about and meet one of the fans. Hey, me, Mr. McGregor. What's up? Holy shit, man. How are you? Bro? I'm good. How are you? Oh, <laughs> This is awesome. I'm blown away by this, man. I, I drove by a couple of times and I was like, what the f***? Yeah, I it's, it's seeing been, things at first. Like, no, it's been up since your uh, Max Holloway fight, man. I no said, way. Are you looking forward to the fight next week? Oh, yeah. Please. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I got my shirt, my wardrobe in there. My, I got your shoes. You see them right through there. With the Reeboks? Yeah, it says champ on the back. <laughs> I don't even have them. I don't even need them ones. They are unbelievable. I'm man. telling honestly, you, man. Yeah. Honestly, man, that's unbelievable. I'm going to put on a show for yeah. you. Sp Thank you so much, yeah. yeah. Every Saturday before the fight, I put up my cardboard cutout, I put up the flag, I put up the banner. And the only thing I can say, and I hope Connor sees this, is that that feeling he had with Jose Aldo when he knocked him out and he became the champ, hands down, that's what I felt like tonight. Like, that's how amazing it was. And I really hope he sees that. And I, I mean, I think he saw it on my face. And there we go again. See, it's going again. But that's what, uh, that's the best I can say, man. I'm enamored right now, man. I'm shaking. I'm acting like such a little oh, baby. And I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Man. I appreciate it, man. Honestly, it was an honor to meet you, brother. I appreciate the support of all the fans out here and all over the world. I never take it for granted. I, I use it as a motivation, so I am extremely uh, grateful to the fans. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Good Have a My goodness. A full, full police cardboard uh, outfit. Pulled me in, I was like, I'm gonna get a takeout, I'm gonna get brought to court or something, fine. He comes up to the window and looks at me. Uh, have you got a driver's license? I says, yeah. Showed him the driver's license. He looked at the driver's license, looked at me and said, um, do you mind if I jump in the passenger seat for a selfie? Stop. All right then. Stop. Jumps in the passenger, takes a selfie. Thanks very much, see you later. Off I went at 200, 200 <laughs> miles per hour. <laughs> like Batman. <laughs> Bang in the middle of the street. Because I own the West Coast. What's cross, man? What do you mean cross, yeah? In the middle of the street I walk. Who's going to stop me? Anyone going to stop me? From Flowrider. Right, Connor! I'm going to park on my baby. Uh, right in your yard. That should be out on the road. Yes. <laughs>
best press conference ever. I'm a... Now oh, we're down here. Just wasting time. What else are you gonna do? Train, eat, shop. I come down here and blow a lot of money on my beautiful woman and myself. And it motivates me to push and keep going. Not many people from where I come from experience this. So I'm just happy and grateful and motivated. I'm gonna go eat and then I'm gonna go walk. And, and that's it. Mm -hmm.